that you think, you know, maybe the computers really are taking over and we're, we're going to be all out of jobs soon. So I'm just going to present my screen and share both for our, um, for our Zoom callers. So sharing the screen for you, which is there. And now for our live streamers, we'll get that screen shared as well, which is here and share the screen to everybody can see the screen now. So welcome. That beautiful photo on the right is uh, an, an, an AI generated image that I put, which was to show a person making resin earrings um, and, and, and it's sunlit studio um, with focus and with um, you know, creating uh, colors or very colorful earrings as well. So that was an example of one that I put together. It took me a couple of minutes to string out together the words I wanted. And what it came out was, well, you know, the fingers are a bit weird and, and I don't see that there's a lot of earrings there but what came out was quite beautiful and i really did enjoy it this today is presented by business station and the digital solutions program through the australian small business advisory services which is uh, funded by the australian government right through until the end of march um, you'll also see this on YouTube through the Business Station channel. So if you just search Business Station on YouTube or just go youtube.com forward slash at Business Station, you'll be able to find that. Um, I'll also be uh, coming through on my channels as well through Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube as well. My YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com forward slash at Dante St. James, Dante St. James. So what we're going to look at today is why these tools are so darn popular. What is it about these tools that people just seem to love so much? Then what we're going to do is look also at using some other tools such as Writer, um, Simple Marketing AI, Write Sonic. So they're three that I use quite regularly, particularly Write Sonic. That is my absolute favorite to use right now. Um, and then in the images, we're going to use Photosonic, which is Write Sonic's photo generator, um, using Stable Diffusion through their Dream Studio and Mid Journey. I'm also going to open up uh, one in Canva. Canva has just literally in the last week added uh, uh, image generation as well. I will tell you now, it's not great. Um, it still has a long way to go, but it is another option for if you want to generate some simple uh, graphics and images rather than photorealistic stuff. But I won't uh, put it down yet because it's a lot of it to go and it's still very, very early in the journey. So what are these tools? And why are they so damn popular right now? Well, I'll tell you now that computer-generated writing creates its, 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 its blogs and all its writing using what's called natural language processing tools in machine learning. Now, the technical side of this is way too hard for me to explain. I won't even try to explain that because honestly, it is it's for the techies to be able to know. What you need to know is that it takes what you write down in natural language and converts that from text into um, into other text or into images. So natural language processing is very similar to you know using Siri on your iPhone or using the Hey G word on your Android phone. Uh, it takes what you naturally say and converts it into something that it can understand in order to produce a result for you. So for writing, for instance, you figure out what you want to write about. You then figure out what kind of content you want to put across and what kind of content you need. And then you add a few parameters in there as well, because what you want to do is really to be able to make it so that people can, um, you know, can, can actually participate with what you're trying to do. People can actually see what you're trying to do um, and, and, what, and, and, and seeing that you actually have a, a goal in mind. So what you want to do is figure out what you want to write about, figure out what the kind of content you need. So let's just say you want to write about um, uh, the new technologies um, employed in using textured vegetable protein to simulate meat. Um, and you want to write about that. So you think, what kind of content do you need? Do you need to make that a blog? Do you need to make that a social media post? Uh, do you need to make it perhaps a, a product description on your website? And then when you add the parameters, you're saying, okay, I want it to be in a certain mood, in a certain length, or in a certain way, or even in a certain language. Some of those languages are also able to be put together as a, um, you know, it, it, there's like tons of languages you can use, not just the Western languages, but it can convert it into things like Mandarin, uh, Japanese, Thai, Indonesian, all these languages are available in most of these tools as well. So once you've figured out what you want to put in there, then what you do, say, for instance, um, yeah, let's see an example. Good idea. New beginners yoga class. So you have a new beginners yoga class you're setting up and you want to write a Facebook ad and you want it to put across a couple of um, very, very important features, such as it's air conditioned and it's led by Jenny Young. 
Because a lot of people think with yoga, it's all hot yoga this, these days, but that's not, that's only one variety of yoga. So you've got a new class, you want to make a Facebook ad, then you want to make sure people understand that it's air conditioned and it's led by Jenny Young. You would have something that would come out looking like this. So this is from uh, Right Sonic, one of my tools. So you can start your yoga journey with our beginner's yoga class. You'll learn the basics of how to breathe and move your body on the mat. Now, remember, all I put in was I'm looking, it's a new beginner's yoga class for a Facebook ad with that information. And now it's going and created stories out of that. It's created whole examples of what you may write. So I would say if you're new to yoga and want an easy to follow and not too strenuous yoga experience, this class is for you. It's friendly. It's engaging. It brings you in. It's got a call to action. So invest in your health and sign up at the other top one, call now to book a spot. The lower one also had a call to action. What it's then giving you is a rating of itself. So it rates itself and says, look, we reckon this 90% carries across or 86% carries across what we think you're trying to say. Things like bring your own mat and towel. The center is fully air conditioned. It's, it's saying it's not too strenuous because we said it's a beginner's class. So it's filled in all those gaps just going, these are the kind of things that we've scanned across the millions of articles on the internet to say, this is what a lot of these people who are trying to do a, a yoga class for beginners would want to say. That's pretty impressive. And that's just at the level of a yoga class in a Facebook post not even to the point of generating a blog. We're going to generate some blogs a little later on. So what it does to produce this is to search for similar content across the web. It then processes all that and into something completely new and fresh that hasn't been written before. And as part of that, it checks it for plagiarism. So you've already got a plagiarism checker built in. And then it'll give you a range of options. Each one of those options will be unique and not written in that particular combination before. So real world examples I've used before was for the My State Bank in Tasmania when I used to uh, do some work for them. So what I did, we had a, an ad agency, copywriter, had a result of about you know three out of 10 in terms of the way we'd rated what the response was in terms of people seeing the ad, people responding to the ad, people uh, converting from the ad. Then we converted over to something which is written by a, an AI copywriter. So the AI copywriter performed better than the ad agency copywriter by 50%. Then when we converted it using the AI and then had someone edit it from the staff, it had a 90, like a 90% 90 rating, a nine out of 10 rating. So the results were best in this case where it was written by the AI and then slightly tweaked by staff, but the actual AI copywriter did a better job than a copywriter on their own. So that's where we start to think that this is a tool that, yes, it could replace someone, but the, ultimately the best tool, way to use the tool is to partner with someone. Um, an example of, a, 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 this is a couple of years old now, I've, I've since moved this business on, but um, that was three out of 10 when I wrote it for myself. Um, when I got the AI copywriter to write it, it was eight out of 10. But in the case where I wrote, I had the AI write it and then I edited it myself, we only got like a, a, a five out of 10. So it wasn't as great. It was nowhere near as good as what it was if I just had let the AI copywriter do its job. So that for me was a lesson in humility, understanding that whilst it might be better to partner up, you need to partner up with someone who knows what they're doing. And I, in that case, probably didn't know what I was doing very well. But in both cases, the AI copywriter outperformed the regular person just doing it on their own. So will that doesn't mean we're going to replace copywriters. Well, Probably not. I don't think we're yet at that point because we get this idea that, you know, that, that there's, that there has to write everything for us perfectly. But what these tools do is they make it very, very easy to write things like ideas and outlines and produce first drafts. So it's not going to necessarily produce the whole blog post. It's not necessarily going to, um, or even do the whole blog post well, although there are tools that I'll show you soon, which will write entire 1500 word blog posts for you without you having to put in a thing. Um, but they're not best at that. What they're best at doing is creating the outline for you to work around. So you work in partnership with the tool. It's the perfect thing for breaking creative block or writer's block. Really, really good for that. It can create a first draft that you can then go and edit. That's how I, I generate a lot of my blog articles is I get it to get the facts and figures together. I do a fact check on it to make sure it's accurate, which it just about always is. Uh, and then I create the color around it. So if I think it's a little bit too factual and too too um, you know linear and too uh, like blah, 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 nothing really going on, I'll add the flavor and the color and the shade to the writing to make it a bit more human readable as well. 
what it does it helps me save a lot of time so i used to take nearly two hours to write a blog now it takes me about 20 minutes um, it gives me a flexibility of content because I don't need to necessarily um, know what I want to write about that day. I can just say, write me something about social media. And it'll come up with a bunch of social media post ideas. And I go, okay, that's what I want to choose. And then I'll craft that into something else. You get past that infamous writer's block where you just don't know what to write. That's probably the most horrid thing is just not being able to get past that. It also breaks down those repetitive tasks. Like for instance, writing things like... Um, product descriptions or writing things like, uh, like emails, like repetitive emails are going to go to people where you want to actually you know, refer to things um, more specifically than just, hi, thanks for emailing. So it gives you those. Um, and I think the other thing that's really repetitive is social media posts. Honestly, like not all of us were really born for social media posts. This helps you to write those social media posts so much quicker and makes them meaningful as well. What they don't do well is writing the whole article or going for specific styles of writing. So if you want to write in the style of um, J.R.R. Tolkien, or you want to write in the style of, um, of J.K. Rowling, or you want to write in the style of um, you know the King's James Bible, it's not going to really do that very well. There's some moods that you can put into different kinds of uh, processes that will allow you to write in a formal language or in a casual or in a colloquial way, um, but it's really not good at, at looking at styles. That's where you've got to go in partnership with it. The whole article, though, like while I said it doesn't do it, it does do it but it doesn't necessarily do it perfectly. And you'll see an example of that very shortly as we create a whole blog post from a topic. Now, in the case of AI, you will feel like nothing is truly original because it's not coming from a human idea. It's coming from, uh, well, it's kind of, you, you say that I want to write about, you know, um, egg-free and dairy-free cooking, and then that's fine. You've come up with the idea of what you want to write about. It then kind of pulls from examples of other work in that area. So it doesn't necessarily give you something new. It gives you something that is a combination of millions of other variations of what you're talking about across the internet. Uh, it does need proofreading. Sometimes you really need to. It, it generally gets the spelling right. What it doesn't necessarily get right is sometimes it will repeat things in different paragraphs. So it says the whole paragraph at some point, then later on it repeats that exact paragraph again. So you need to proofread it. Um, this sometimes feels like a little emotionless. It's a very, very factual. Um, that's just the, the that's just the limitation of AI because it's not something which is coming from human feelings and emotions. It's coming from just your ability to uh, its ability to be able to draw on facts and figures and use connective words to make it make sense. Sometimes the phrasing is a little awkward. So what I like to do, I like to run everything I've done on here through Grammarly. Or you might use um, Hemingway or one of those other tools. Grammarly, I love it because it integrates to everything. So I'm able to copy and paste the writing into a Word document and have Grammarly, Grammarly um, uh, have that increase the screen view. I'm just not sure if I can. Um, it's it, I'm, I'm sharing a whole screen. Sorry, Leanne. Sorry. The presentation slide size is relatively small. I'm sorry, I'm sharing the whole screen, so I don't know how to make that bigger. Um, I'll try. Let me see if I can do that. Um, if I go share screen, um, is it maybe? Just trying to find the right place. I'm using multiple ones here, so maybe it's this one here. Let me know, Leanne, if that's a little bit clearer for you. Um, I can't quite see it, but hopefully that's what's coming through now. Just let me know if you can see that. Um, as we move on, um, will it take over your computer? No, it doesn't. It's not that kind of computer. It's usually accessed through a website or through an app so that it won't take over. So I didn't realize it wasn't sharing the whole screen. It was only sharing a little bit. Thanks, Leanne, for prompting me for that. Um, there's a very big difference between what we call general artificial intelligence and narrow artificial intelligence. Um, you think of AI sometimes as you know, the Terminator or, or, or the, the Matrix. Um, that's what we call generalized AI. It's an AI that becomes sentient and self-aware and it starts making decisions um, based upon its own will and its own uh, desires rather than what we program into it. Narrow artificial intelligence like Siri. It's like Google search. It's like a, you know, an algorithm that runs on Facebook that shows you what you're going to see in your particular um, kind of uh, in, in your feed uh, and it also applies to these writing tools so it's not really something that's going to go berserk on your computer so first of all before we look at the image tools which are very cool we're going to look at the AI writing tools which I think are pretty cool as well 
The first one is an Australian one called simplemarketing.ai. So a couple of girls in Melbourne put this one together. Um, I met them in a conference oh, a couple of years ago now. So one of the early plays into the market. Um, it's price wise has a free version that you can use for, for generating 15 content items per month. That's pretty good. It allows you to have a content calendar. You can join their Facebook community. You can get some email support. You have one user who can use it and it is free. That's, that's the key for it. Um, as you want to use more things, uh, then it goes further along. This is probably the least feature intensive version. So simplemarketing.ai um, because it was very early in the game, but it does have a free version and it does a few things particularly well. So what I'm going to do is share the right screen here so we can get the... Um, the right, uh, let me see, the right one, simplemarketing.ai, here it is. So in this one, I'm just gonna register my account. So I'm just gonna go Dante St. James, uh, put in, you know, generate a, pa uh, a password, there we go. Um, I'm gonna go the free plan. I don't really wanna be updated, but I'm gonna agree to their terms and conditions. So as it goes in, sets up my account. Shouldn't take a moment. And now I'm in. So the email's already been taken. That's because I've already, I can already log in and do this. So let me just find where the login is. Cause, uh, sign in. There we go. I've already got an account. Forgot about that. Been a while since I've used it. So as I log in, it's now going to give me my, 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 my canvas to work with. So I can use uh, them as a blog starter. So I can start the process. I can create a Facebook post, a LinkedIn post. I can get inspiration for things. Write along is interesting. You write one paragraph, it then writes the next. Um, you can get email subjects, thank you emails, nurture emails, user personas even. So it can, you can design quite a few different marketing things. So what we're going to do is get started on writing a blog. So we can use their blog starter. So the key phrase we want to do to generate content is we're going to write about dairy free um, cooking for beginners, healthy, um, lactose free recipes. So what I'm going to do from that, I'm going to generate the content. So with those different phrases I put in, it's going to start to generate some ideas for what I could write as a blog. So it starts to sort of go, okay, I want to take those items, dairy-free cooking, lactose-free recipes, healthy, and it's going to search the internet for a whole lot of stuff and a whole lot of examples and bring me some starters. So it says, you know, what is the healthiest way to cook? If you want to take your cooking to the next level, improve the taste, texture, blah, 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 blah. So it starts it from that one. So it gives me a, a thing called top dairy-free recipes as the subject. And then gives me a second article version, which is 10 healthy and delicious dairy-free recipes. It's now taken, I've been a vegan for 17 years and never looked back. I'm not a health food crazed person, but I've found more energy. So it starts with a very personal bit and say, here's a little bit about myself. Now I'm living in the Netherlands. Now this is where it gets this particular tool, I think is plagiarizing from someone who actually has written this. So I don't think this one has as good a plagiarism checker, but it does give you some things. So, so the ideas, think of this as an idea. You say, I've been lactose free now for 17 years and never looked back. I'm living in Brisbane and I moved here with my family 13 years ago ago so you can create your story around that um, and then it gives you another one here diary of a vegan part three creams this is the third part of my dairy free cooking so it's taken pieces from other people's stuff and i don't think it's done a very good plagiarism check but it gives you the ideas so it's giving you a bunch of ideas you can work from saying i'll factor at the center of rumors rumors that vegans are unhealthy um, it's a subject i have a bit of passion about so you can write about that sort of stuff It'll also bring in some suggested images you may want to use. So you can take those images and select three of them and it will let then copy and download that article into a Microsoft Word version for you. This one is not the best one for generating blogs. I think it does some other things a lot better. So if I pop into pop out of this particular one and we'll generate some new content. So let's look at the start. So back at the start, we want to do maybe a Facebook post. And our Facebook post is all going to be about um, empowerment of women through physical exercise, physical exercise and self-defense. So that's all I'm just going to put in there. And I want to write a Facebook post about this. So let's generate some Facebook posts. This one's usually pretty quick to generate because they're not very long. So here we go. It's starting to put it together. So the content was supposed to appear here. This one's bugging out a little bit on me. <laughs> Let's generate that content again. We can also have a voice produce this. So they've got Ty, who's um, one of the AIs, but you can change that through a different AI voice. 
So let's see what it's going to give us. It's the empowerment of women through physical exercise and self-defense as a Facebook post. So the idea here is it going to be quite short. It's not going to produce a big thing like a blog, um, but it will give us some ideas. So here you go. Things women should never do. Oh, that's a lot of information, but it's also true. This is not for weak-minded people. Hey, guys, I just wanted to share something I'm very passionate about. So that one, I'll go, and that's not that great. Um, this one, again, as a Facebook post, it's telling a story which I think it's grabbing. So to me today, this is pretty embarrassing because this one bugging out totally. This entire system really isn't working. It's just taking a lot of people's stuff and just copying it. So you do have to be careful with some of these older AI systems that they um, uh, get, can bug out because they're not worked on very well. So this one, we're going to skip this one because everything I'm generating today is just bugging out. What I'll take you to, though, is the next one, which is called Writer, R-Y-T-R. Now, Writer has also has a free version, which I'm using right here, and it has um, a much more simple interface. You go, what is the language? You can see there's quite a lot of them tons of languages we're going to go in english you can then set the tone and this is what one of the things i really like about this tool so i want to say it's a casual tone for a what am i going to do a call to action a facebook ad um, maybe a landing page website copy so i might go a product description let's just say it's a product description the product is going to be called a um, silver um, pendant um, with um, amethyst let's spell that right amethyst I need a shorter one so it's going to be called a uh, silver pendant let's call it silver pendant and the silver pendant um made from argentinian silver um with a amber um insert um it is sterling silver so I'm just writing down some of the things I want it to be able to put together. So we've got sterling silver. Um, let's make it chunky. Um, made to last. Last statement piece. Put all those things into a product description. They're going to have two variations, say three variations, and make it creative. So they say, do you want to make it more factual or more creative? I'm going to make it pretty much optimal. So optimal creativity. Let's see what it comes out with us for a product description on a website about a silver pendant with an amber insert, which is made from sterling silver. It's chunky and made to last. So here it goes. This is a statement necklace. It's made from Argentinian silver and has an amber insert with a chunky and heavy design. It's made to last. There's no other like it in the world. Our Argentinian silver jewelry is handcrafted and made to last, but we understand that sometimes pieces need to be repaired and given the love they deserve. With our Argentinian silver repair service, you'll get a return on the investment in less than two years due to the low cost of silver. Or statement pieces make you feel like yourself. Don't be afraid to make a statement. That's why we're bringing you this exquisite silver pendant, the Argentinian silver and amber insert of the perfect combination of chic, classic, and earthy. So you can see how it's gone and created really good words in there. It's gone and made those product descriptions so much quicker. For people who really don't like writing, this is gold. This is, well, it's silver, but it's gold. It's really making it easy for you to take particularly this last one is is really like quite convincing. Now that's in casual. If we want to take that tone and make it more convincing, then we do that again. So let's just take one variant with a convincing style of writing based upon what we put in there. So let's have a look. So statement pieces, Argentine, no, that, that last one is a little too um, on there, but they're it's done pretty much the same thing. It's just taken those words and made it, you know, not particularly great. So convincing <laughs> hasn't worked in this case. What is it with these AI tools all bugging out today? I've never had these bug out on me before. So let's see what it's going to write this time with two new variations down the bottom. So sterling silver is a metal of elegance and beauty, which is why we made our jewelry from it. The Argentinian silver that we use for our pendants is of the highest quality and each piece is carefully hand polished before being shaped into an elegant piece that will last for years. That is pretty convincing. I am a statement piece. I may be made of Argentinian silver and amber and insert, but I'm still full of charm. I may be a little hefty, but that's because I'm made to last. So that's in the first person as well, which has taken a really strong, um, you know, uh, a strong creative bent to it. So what this is doing just gives you like a feed here of all the things you're generating. So I can sort of wipe all those out if I want to wipe those out and let's start something new. So if we don't want to do a product description, maybe we want post and caption ideas. 
So we want posts and caption ideas around a topic of, um, this might be a great idea for you to put in what your business is or a product that you sell. And let's give an example from your actual business. So I'll do a few of those in here. So just um, pop it in the chat, what your business is or what you sell, what's a product you sell. And we'll be able to put an example in there. I'm going to take one here from somebody who I do know who's in the call, which is um, for uh, helping people to start businesses, to start new businesses in Western Australia um, at no cost. And we'll put it there. It's a government supported system, uh, supported uh, program. So let's see with those hundred things what it's going to write for me. Three examples of it. Let's have a look. And I'll try, I'll try yours too, Tracy, in just a moment. So it's going to generate three. Entrepreneurship is good for the economy. Western Australia wants to help you start your business. Want to start a business? Western Australia is making it easier by providing a whole range of grants. Or they've taken some from some programs. Welcome to Startup Step. Or maybe this last one. The time has come for a new economy, one that fosters creativity and innovation. Western Australia's entrepreneurship approved program. So what you can take is some of those ideas that you've got, okay, that's the stuff I want to start working with. I can take that and go, okay, it's not Western Australia's entrepreneurship approved program. I can change that to the entrepreneurship facilitators program. And then you put in your pieces to it. So it then matches what you want it to say. Uh, then um, the last one, ready to get started, visit today and learn more about the program. So it's making short, sharp, little things that, that are going to help you to generate you know, the kind of things you're after. It's going to take the tapping uh, emotional freedom technique from Tracy. So Tracy, we're going to say EFT technique, um, emotional freedom uh, technique. Tapping. So I've got a few words in there. Let's see what it's going to come up with, if I'm going to get the spelling right, um, to see what it's going to come up with for EFT. So I'm going to write some ideas around EFT to see whether that is. So the power is in your hands. Tap away the negative thoughts, release stress, and attain inner peace using an easy, learnable technique. Or practice this simple yet powerful technique of tapping to heal yourself. Or did you know that there's a highly effective technique to release negative feelings and emotions? So this is what one of these things is just being able to put together based upon those few words I've put in. It's basically written a post for you. Um, in this case, it's cut it short, but that's all right. We'll be able to take all that. It will be a post just on its own. So 356. Now, what you can do then is start adding things like an AI image to that. So our AI image, you can, you know, take this if you've got a paid version of the account it can do that or you can rephrase it if you don't like the phrasing of it you can click on rephrase um, that also is also part of a paid thing but the things that have got you know you can continue writing you say i want you to continue writing this post so as you tap say even though i had a tough day i deeply and completely accept myself so it continues then to write that so um, in this one we can say okay we want this one to continue writing on so continue writing, which it only gives us a certain amount of characters to work with. So in the free versions, you do get some limits. I'm going to take someone else's here. We'll just uh, remove those. We've got um, beachfront accommodation based at Sunday Beach in the Northern Territory. So beachfront accommodation at Sunday Beach in T. Um, we're going to go to Skippers um, at Dundee as the name. Um, they're going to say it's like boating, fishing, some of the things you do there. So what they're going to do is get some ideas together for that particular business. So let's have a look. at Skippers at Dundee. So nestled on the tranquil shores of Dundee Beach NT, Skippers at Dundee offers a range of accommodation and options, um, uh, accommodation accommodations to suit your needs. Book today and get exclusive access to the National Park and Sanctuary Reserve. So that some of that stuff's not going to be appropriate, but it's sort of taking what it thinks it can get. Um, this one here, get into the mindset of Australian fishing, dine relaxing with Dundee Beach as your home base. Find yourself in a great feeling of freedom when you unwind at Skippers at Dundee with our generous apparel for the laid back beachgoers. So you wouldn't say it wouldn't be a generous apparel, but you say in um, for, with our um, great um, accommodation or laid back beachgoers. Get ready for a day of cooking and barbecue at the rendezvous. So we'd probably take that out. So we'd say, get ready for a day of fishing. And then we go fishing and we do that whole thing where we continue writing. 
So after a great day of fishing, swimming, and fun at the beach at Skipper's. So you're probably not going to swim in the water, but you might swim in the pool at Skipper's instead, you know, because uh, not Northern Territory, we've got a few problems with uh, with crocodiles, in case you didn't know. So take the kids fishing at Dundee Beach NT and make your next holiday a fishing trip. So you can start to get some, some ideas to start off your posts like that. Now, this by all means for me is not the best of the tools. The best tool for me is this one called Write Sonic. Now, you can start writing with this one for free, um, but I've got the paid version. I'm going to show you my version of it. So sign in and we'll get writing. Write Sonic to me just is the most reliable every time tool. So I'm going to take, take some of the ones um, we've got some um, from True Colors, Advanced Playing, End of Life Care, Frame Print. I'm going to look at these in this tool. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write an article, a 1500 word article in just four steps. So let's click on that one. So I'm going to write an article. Let's just see it's around about um, advanced planning um, for end of life care. Uh, I'm going to go premium because I get access to it, so I might as well. So I, I, it's going to give me some ideas for, for advanced planning for end of life care. So on the right, it's going to give us some ideas that starts the benefits of advanced planning for end of life care, how to make a plan that works, helping your family understand the benefits of advanced planning for end of life care, or a guide to advanced planning for end of life care, how to make the right decisions. I'm going to take that last one. So now we've got a title. I'm now going to generate an introduction to that article. So let's see what it brings out. Bear in mind, it's drawing its information from millions of pages of content around the internet. And it's going to bring in now a, a bunch of options. So you could say end of life care is a difficult subject to approach, but it's essential to plan ahead. Without advanced planning, you may be faced with fresh, with difficult decisions during an already difficult time. You can see now the quality of this particular tool compared to the last two. It's really good. So I'm going to set that third one again. It's now taken that article intro and I'm going to now generate the outline of the rest of my article. So the, the, the sections of the article, so the subtitles. So let's see what it generates for us after doing a really good intro. It's now going, okay, it's now saying, what is planning, uh, the advanced planning, how to communicate wishes, finding the right resources, making sure your plan is followed, advanced directives, durable power of attorney, living will. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Um, I've got benefits, steps to take, if communicating your wishes, finding the right resources, finding common mistakes. I'm going to take this one. So what it'll do, it'll do up to 10 of these sections in the outline. Now, what I might want to do is maybe take out those little um, A, Bs and Cs and just have it like that. I might even want to take some of those out. So I might go uh, common mistakes is probably good. The conclusion, uh, the benefits, that's pretty good. That's given us a pretty good plan. Now I'm going to generate the whole article. So whew, this is going to be good. This is going to be awesome because this is where you see what the magic of these tools can tend to be and how much it can take some of the time off. Now, you know, the, the, the most basic way to do this is to take it, proofread it, correct it, and then put it in as is. But Really, if you're going to put a lot of um, care and love into this, you wouldn't just take this article. You'd go and add things to it. So what I like tend to do is I, I take what it's created and then after each paragraph or each section, I add a paragraph of my own thoughts or my own experiences or my own observations to add a very personal touch to it. So it sounds really good. This one's monthly. Um, for me, I got a, um, sometimes it comes on to AppSumo as a lifetime deal. And then you can get sort of a, a certain amount of words, something like, you know, 7,000 words a month. This one at the level I'm paying, and I'll go back and show you all that. So look at this, it's even got like inserting art. It's even insert, inserting um, images for you. So here we've got right through, we've got the advanced planning for end of life care there, advanced benefits of advanced planning, steps to take in advanced planning. It's really showing you like it's going through an entire article. Now, whether all these things are correct or not, you, you Eleanor, in your, in your um, experience, you would need to look at this and make sure that these things are real. That has just written an entire original plagiarism checked article for you. So I could take all that, put that into Word um, or into Google Docs. So you usually use Google Docs because it works really, really well with, um, with uh, Grammarly. So I'll put it in here and I might want to go, okay, Grammarly, I want you to start checking um, like what's right here. So end of life care, I can change into end of life like that. Grammarly saying that, you know, I might want to correct that everywhere um, there as well. 
um, and it'll take the you know, create a plan instead of that will, but say to two. So it makes the writing feel a little less clunky. So it's of saying often a very difficult time. You say often a difficult time. So it's it's you getting rid of all those words you don't need and rewriting the sentences into something which is a bit nicer. So that's me using Grammarly on the side. Um, and yes, you can brand all these documents to your colors, Tracy. Um, that yeah, you can just do what, basically what you're doing. You can take out anything you don't need, and what you will do then is take these documents that take what you've got here and just go into your website and design it however you want. So I'll go in the back of one of my websites and show you what I do in the back of my um, in the back of um, one of my sites using WordPress. So I log into WordPress. Now I'm going to take this and create a new um, article in there. Oh yeah, this is going to be amazing. So yeah, someone who's dyslexic with language processing delay, this is going to change your life. This definitely will be a life changer. So I go into my post, add a new post in WordPress. You may have a different site. You might have a Wix or a Squarespace or something. Same principles. I'm just going to copy and paste. That's then that whole thing in there. And then for the title, I'm just going to put that in the right place up here. And then I can then start to insert things like images. So let's just pretend I've got some images that are already in my library here. So let's just say I've got this one here. So it's somebody who's looking at um, their mobile phone in the cafe. And then I can add my images or your, any of your kind of branding in there at all. And if I go to then post that now, that will go as part of my blog. So I won't do that because this is not appropriate for my blog. But that's, that's all you do. You take it, copy and paste it, put it in. That's without you doing anything extra. Now, Grammarly also helps me to make that easier to write. So it's going to highlight any of my really, really awkward um, language and turn it into something which is less awkward. So for instance, there, that's an awkward sentence. We change it. If that's an awkward sentence, Grammarly will change it to something a little bit easier. So you see, I'm using a lot of different tools here. Um, Grammarly has a free version, which you can use, which is very, very good and a paid version, which I use because I write so many blogs and right through that, you can just take it and then make it so it's a little bit, you know, less robotic and a little bit more written for humans. So yeah, definitely a, a very life-changing thing if you're someone who wants to do a lot of writing, but you are not particularly good at writing. So that's just uh, the AI article writer. I can also just write paragraphs. Um, there's a few different article writers, but the 3.0 is amazing. What you can also do is take things you've already written that might've been good and rephrase them. So I'm just gonna pop into my LinkedIn profile where I've got a, a bunch of different things that might've um, you know, been really good or really bad um, that performed in, in a certain way in my profile. So I'll pop into, let's just say, um, this one that I posted this morning. So I'm gonna take this particular article, this particular post, copy it, I'm gonna jump it, dump it into here uh, to write Sonic. And I'm going to say, I wanna take this and make it more casual. I might make it a casual voice. Let's see what it does. We're gonna generate a rephrasing of that same article. This is particularly good if you've had a really high performing post on in any sort of social media, and you wanna say, uh, make it so that it will um, you know, sound different the next time you put it in. It says the same thing, it sounds different. So last week was truly something else. I had the amazing chance to connect with you six pupils prior to their graduation at Humpty Doo. Or it would be an understatement to say that last week was extraordinary. Or last week was simply amazing. So it's taken what I've written and rewritten it, saying the same thing about the same facts, but it rewrites it in a way which is a little bit different than what it was maybe the last time you posted it. So if you've got a really high performing post that you want to repeat again in three months, but you don't want to say the same thing, this tool will do that for you. So as you can see what I've got in my balance for the month, I've got 15,472 words. Um, that's in my, that's not paying. So I'm not paying for that. I got the once bought a lifetime deal that gives me 17,000 words a month. So, you know, I, I got a lot of words to work with in a month, but um, the free version is a little bit less than that. But what you can do, you can upgrade if you need to, but there is a free version. In fact, what I'll show you is what the uh, pricing is for this particular tool. So it's um, <laughs> pretty amazing. Like I, I use this all the time because it is that good. So let's see, we've got the uh, free trial, which gives you up to 6,250 words. Words. That's lifetime though. So you're not going to get that per month. You're only going to get that once off. So it's a trial to see if you really like it. 10 bucks US a month. Now that goes up as you go from a good quality to a premium. So I pay the premium. So it ends up being about $13 a month. 
because I'm doing a lot of long form writing. You can save about a third by doing the annual billing. So that's the annual billing price at the at the um, monthly billing. You can then cut that down, and it just it just means that each month is a little bit more expensive. So ten becomes thirteen, thirteen becomes fifteen. So it becomes a little bit more. And remember, it is in US dollars. You will have to make that conversion. You see what it gives you? It gives you all the templates, allows you to click it and, and export it to WordPress in one. You can have Zapier if you want to write them in there and have it go off to lots of different places. Um, you can pretty much do it whatever you need to in there. This is not an expensive tool, um, especially if you're someone who does have to write things a lot. So if you're writing lots and lots of stuff, this is a tool that you're going to get a lot of use out of. Um, one Another example, you can tell stories. Um, now, this is interesting in stories. So we can say that, um, you know, uh, the your new word for crocodile is Baru. The story of Baru is one that has been told for thousands of years by the people. Uh, the spelling right by the people of East Arnhem Land. So if I want that tone of voice to be, let's say inspirational. In English, let's generate a story. So it's going to tell us a little bit of a story based upon what it can learn about Baru from, from the your new word for um, for the crocodile, the people of the East Arnhem Land. So let's see what sort of stories you can generate for us that might help us to describe a piece of art or something. So Baru the crocodile is an iconic figure in East Arnhem Land. His story told for millennia and his name echoed in a single word, your new. The people of the land, Baru symbolizes the power of the land and the wisdom of its people. Far away in ancient times, the your new people live peacefully inside the animal kingdom. So he's starting to get some stories that's been extra to extrapolate from some of the stories that are told about the crocodile by the your new people. Um, uh, by the new people from from East Island land over you know the whole internet, so you can see that it then builds those stories for you. Um, you can then try any sort of story you want to make. Let's try something else. Um, got questions, emails, rewrite with keywords. You can send cold emails. Do try to find something which is kind of cool. So something which is maybe like. Um, I want to do something like a, a social media post. So social media, we can do a Twitter thread, um, LinkedIn post version two. So let's do a LinkedIn post. So a LinkedIn post is, um, this is how I managed to, to um, enable my team to a lower attrition rate and a higher level of employee satisfaction. But let's see, it's an excited tone of voice. I might change that down to something a little less excited. Let's make it maybe uh, professional. Let's generate something around a lower attrition rate and a higher level of employee satisfaction. What's that going to come up for us? It'll help to sell a bit of a story, hopefully. Yeah. So effective employee retention strategies can help reduce, attri reduce attrition and increase employee satisfaction. I recently implemented a few strategies for my team that have had a positive impact, including one, regularly checking with staff to discuss their evolving needs. It's actually going through the best practices that have been dragged from tons of people's posts on LinkedIn and across the internet to give you basically a post that answers that very question. Uh, I'm going to take an idea from our previous uh, questions here. So We've got someone who's doing True Colors Fun Empathy and Team Communication Workshops. Let's say this, um, Fun Team Communication Workshops. Uh, so I can see how I um, bring joy to workplaces with Fun Team Communication Workshops. Let's see what it tells us about this, what it's going to write as a LinkedIn post in a professional voice for that particular entry. This is so exciting when you get to do this and it's why I use this particular tool because it is that good, it really is powerful. <laughs> yes. I think uh, some people would like to be able to use these for tenders, all sorts of stuff. So how to bring joy to workplaces, fun team communication workshops. Team communication is not only about business, it's about having fun and building relationships. That's why I believe joy should be part of any workplace. With my fun team communication workshops, I help people understand how effective communication can help teams get along better and be more productive. 
how close would that be exactly to um, to Suzanne? I'm oh, not Suzanne to to Leanne on on what your business does. So you can see there, there's what three, four, five, six different, uh, yeah, six different variations on a on a LinkedIn um, post that you could do. So that's the kind of stuff it will do. It'll come up with all the things that you do in your area because you're not the only person in the world who does what you do. It draws on the resources of all the other people in the world to do what you do to come up with something that's unique and hasn't been written before. So that's an example of that. So now we've seen um, what all these writing tools are like. What I want to introduce you now to is to the, the new world of image generation. So if you're someone who's really sick of using um, uh, you know, awful stock images with fake smiles and fake people wearing fake clothes and all that, it like, can just be awful. There's some tools here will let you do it. Photosonic's the first one I want to show you. It's got a free trial that gives you 15 generations. So I'm going to use that one. Um, after you go up, it then you know, gets a bit more. So 10 bucks a month uh, for basics. It gives you things like face restoration, all that sort of thing. Let's go and have a look at what Photosonic looks like. Now, this is not one of my favorite ones, but it does let you change to the, you know, you can do a vertical if you want to do like an Instagram story, for instance. Um, you might want to do it in a painting, a photographic style, um, you know, a cute character, um, an anime even. So what I'm going to do is probably look at um, a photo style of a young woman um, with her back to the camera walking towards a gym. That's a young woman in active wear with her back to the camera walking towards a gym at sunset. This is what you do. You give that kind of prompts and you generate it. Let's see. I've got to sign in first. It wants me to sign in as who I am. Yes, we have met before. It's going to make me go and get the email to log in. This is what um, the new world of security of logins makes you do. So let's get in there. Uh, sign in. It's got this link. Put that onto my new one up here. I'm going to have to type all that again, I bet. Look, of course I do. So we're looking for a photorealistic version of something in a vertical format. A young woman in active wear walking um, towards a gym at sunset. Let's see what it gives us. I used to pay for this, so I've got a few extra credits up my sleeve that I can use. Uh, the thing is to have used a free version, um, you can, uh, uh, Leanne, I've got such a good answer for you coming up. So I've got um, a young woman in active wear walking towards a gym at sunset. So, you know, it does some, it's not great. I don't think this is the perfect tool. Look at the face. It just does weird things with the face. The body is completely awkward. So we can say, okay, what we might do with it is in a style of an anime because it does a lot better with cartoons than what it does with people. So let's do a version of this, this time as an anime, so as a cartoon. So you may want to do that instead of photorealistic. Some of these tools don't do photorealistic very well. This particular tool is really quite terrible at it. Canva has one too, which is also particularly bad. Um, can this particular like, reduce the characters? Uh, I guess you're talking um, skippers as a, um, in case of a, um, oh, that's not even anime. So this tool to me, this is why I don't use it anymore. I think it's really, really bad at this. But you can do a painting though. So I can say a watercolor painting of, so this way I can create something that's a little bit more of a young woman. Sorry, um, so back to skippers. Um, I think it's Emma um, is where you can reduce the number of characters in the copy you want. So what you want it to output. So, you, so when we were doing a blog before, um, that was specifically to give you a 1500 word article. So in this, so you can have like a painting, but again, what's with the arms? Well, this is where it gets a bit creepy. It's not particularly good. So I'm gonna move on and show you then another version, which is called Dream Studio, which is um, another free tool by a thing called Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion. So for instance, here is um, down the bottom here, you write it. And I'm going to say um, sunset at Dundee Beach, Northern Territory, with boats, small boats in the distance, and a few clouds in the sky. So 
And if I go to dream that up, it's going to say, what am I going to do to dream of that particular scene I'm trying to, 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 to imagine? I can play with things like the width, the height, the scale. And here you go. It's giving us a few ideas of what it believes based on the many photos that have been taken of Dundee Beach of what it looks like. So you get an idea here. So it's, it's, it's inserted a few boats in there. Oh, I don't know whether that is exactly what Dundee Beach looks like, but it doesn't. I don't think we're exactly looking across to anything at Dundee. So it faces the ocean. Um, but you might find that these may be, you know, these may be what you want or maybe not. Um, you can then, you know, add different things. You can add different effects to it, copy it into Photoshop, copy it into Canva, all those kind of things. So that's one that's like that. Maybe if we're looking at a person, if we look at a, um, a, a woman sitting at a desk, looking out to a view of um, tropical gardens, a woman sitting at a desk with a computer with the view out the window is looking out to a view of tropical gardens. Let's see what that has to say. Let's dream it. And this will then give us a little bit extra. Let's see what it's going to do. So there you go. So that's, that's a completely automatically generated thing. So let's put a desk, a laptop computer, and a person. Now, some of the dimensions do look a little bit weird, but if you're doing this in a blog, for instance, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, you don't have to have something that's absolutely perfect. You might want to say something a bit more reasonable, such as um, a view from an apartment overlooking uh, the Brisbane River at South Bank during a fireworks display. That's going to take all the sort of things it can find that seem to be matching that and see, see what it comes up with. There you go. So there's a basic outline of kind of Brisbane. That to me is kind of like it looks like Brisbane. The problem is that it's looking, um, it, it's sort of mashed together parts of the Brisbane River looking from South Bank to the city and not really matched it exactly because it can't take someone's photo and just copy it, for instance. So I'll give you an idea of some sites and some ideas where you might go, okay, this is what I've been trying to create. This is the kind of thing I want to try and produce. I want to show you one more tool which to me is the best of the lot. Uh, this, you, this is called Mid Journey, and it's a bot that you use that then works um, as a tool within uh, Discord. Discord's a system that's like a, um, like a group system. So if you think of like Facebook groups, this is like an external thing that's like a Facebook group that people can join your, your, your Discord. And then what it's done is it's attached this particular bot to Discord. So you can see some examples of some ones I've done here. There was um, a young Arab woman in a hijab working at a computer in a suburban bedroom with some Islamic art on the walls. Um, this is an example of a young male YouTube creator recording himself on camera in an excited pose. Then we've got uh, some further up ones here. This one turned out particularly well. A young man is working on social media on his mobile phone at a Melbourne cafe in spring. And it's come up with some like, like look at this. This is like phenomenal. It looks so good. So this has a, like, it's a much higher quality thing. Now, what it will initially do is give me four variations on that. So it takes it and does a basic of it. And then I tell it to either upscale, which is the U. So I take either option number one and upscale it, or I want more versions of one. Or if I want three, so that's number three, I upscaled three. And then it came out with this upscale version with high quality. It fills in the gaps and makes it look more realistic. So that's like a phenomenal thing. Now, this is where I think um, where Leanne was asking to, to find one of Indigenous Australians in workplace settings. So this is where I'll use uh, a, a something like, for instance, uh, imagine. So there's a prompt. You imagine, click on prompt, and then you put in your prompt. So I'd say a young Australian Aboriginal woman uh, working at an office um, near computers and office equipment. And what I'm gonna add in there is some ideas for how I want this image to look. So it might be something like I'm gonna put in 8K resolution. It's gonna have a 3D effect to it. So it looks like it's, you know, it looks like it's real. Um, make it detailed, um, hyper-realistic. So I start putting in some things that I wanna sort of make it look like. I'm gonna add cinematic lighting because it's going to create a quite a dramatic effect. So dramatic. 
And what I'm going to do it in, I can say to do this in the style of a particular kind of artist or a particular kind of cartoons, or I can, or it can just be photorealistic. So um, let's say just I want it to be in the style of, and probably you may not know this, Studio Ghibli. So Studio Ghibli is a uh, Japanese animation studio. So it's going to create an animation version of this. So let's have a look at that. Studio Ghibli. And then I'm going to add in, you know, it's got a bit of code. So it goes, you know, um, uh, it's going to be dash dash V4. It's telling me I want to use version four of this AI, which is the highest quality one. So I'm going to put that in. So while we're doing that, I'm going to do another one too. Imagine I'm going to do the exact same one, but not in a cartoon format. So I'm going to do the young Australian Aboriginal woman um, working in office. I'm not going to do Studio Ghibli this time. I'm just going to do a regular photorealistic version of it. So I'm going to get that one going as well while this is all happening. And so it's going to now start generating those two things. So while that's happening, and it's a journey through some of the other photos I've done. This was um, the photo in front of, of my, for my post on LinkedIn today, which was a young black man um, working as a graphic designer at his computer in a sunlit room. So that was, you know, a comfortable home office in the suburbs. Uh, it gave me variations of that. So I could see variations of it. And if we go further up, we've got some ideas. So, so this is how I try to generate a lot more diversity in the characters I'm doing. So this, for instance, is an example, young Australian Aboriginal women using a spreadsheet at a computer in a modern office. I'm not sure what they did with the clothing. It wasn't particularly that, but we can look at the, removing those kinds of things. So you can start to see that you can start to um, put variations of the kind of people that are in there. So two web designers discussing work in a modern office. This is quite a gorgeous, a gorgeous image. So this one was a graphic designer working from a home office. And so it was just beautiful lights, beautiful effects. It's a little bit cartoony, but then that's okay. It doesn't have to be a photo so much. In fact, photos are what are not produced really well. Working from home in a modern office, you know, this is a really beautiful image of a home office in a really nice place. So you start to see some really beautiful art coming forward and it gives you lots of options. So um, this one was like uh, three inspirational young men of mixed race backgrounds. And so this one, I thought this was an absolutely beautiful example of like an inspirational photo of these three young men looking forward to the future. So I could take any one of those, upscale it, and it'll remove some of the weird eyes and it'll remove some of the, the, the inconsistencies and turn it into something a lot more realistic and a lot more detailed. So um, actually, we might take that. I'm going to take my favorite one of all these was probably the, um, I'd say, number one. Oh, number three is pretty good, actually. Let's take number three and upscale it. So upscale three. So that's going to put that in my queue as well. So as we go right down the bottom now, we're starting to see some of the things that are being developed. So youngest, this is the Studio Ghibli version, the, um, the version that was designed um, with a cartoon effect. So each one of these I can actually turn. So what it's doing, it's, it's actually adding some things that really don't need to be there. Let's say this woman here, she's a little bit, um, a little less um, strangely de um, designed. This one's got like some weird versions of glasses. But remember, this is also cartoon. This is not real, hyper-realistic. So we want to look for something that's more like the realistic version, which is our next option down, which is this one right here. Let's open that one up and you can see then. Now that is stunning. Now, particularly if you take this first woman here, we'll take her, she's number one. So I'm going to take number one and I'm now going to upscale her. So by upscaling her, upscale one. I can also do variations. So I can say, yeah, I kind of really like number one, but I want to get more variations of her. So I go V and it's going to do four versions of that particular image. We're starting to see now our upscale version of that photo. It's kind of done some weird things. With this. Oh no, his eyes are there. I thought he looked like a bit like a zombie there for a minute. So we've got like a gorgeous upscale version of that photo. And it's just basically taken a whole bunch of people together um, and, and so it said, okay, I'm going to make mixed race, mixed race backgrounds and make this thing work. So they're absolutely beautiful images. Now, uh, Mid Journey does cost about $10 US a month. I use this so much. It's much definitely worth my money for it. But it's one of those ones where you have to the cost or nothing. So here we go, the upscale version of our young Australian woman working from an office, young average Australian woman working from an office. So it's done this bit funny things with freckles there. So what you could probably do is, you know, get those those freckles out by using something like um, Photoshop to reduce that kind of stuff. But that's a gorgeous photo. Like it's an absolutely beautiful image. 
this is where you can add some real diversity to the characters that are in there. So you're not always getting the same looking stuff coming through all the time. Because in case you haven't noticed, stock images tend to be a lot of white folks. Here's four versions of that same person. As you can see, it's changed her slightly. So she looks like a different person, slightly different hairstyles, um, some different characteristics in the office, different lamps in use, for instance, different positions of the computers. So you can start to see that, you know, um, it, it's basing it upon what it can generate as being, you know, just like a, uh, a another um, Australian Aboriginal young woman. So mid journey, uh, yeah, as I said, is the one that's going to cost you money. You can see why it costs you money because it's very, very good at what it does. So there is a free 25 minutes of generation you can do. So that 25 minutes of generation will allow you to like, like literally how long it was taken to generate those, then you could do it. Um, and then the basic $10 a month, which is what I do, and I get 200 minutes a month. So that's all I do. But you can probably get away with just giving it a free trial, see if it's worth your time. But it does, it's not the easiest thing to set up. And you may need a little bit of a hand, which is why you can use things like the Digital Solutions Program to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So the Digital Solutions Program, businessstation.com.au, you can then uh, get your three hours of one-to-one -one advisory if you haven't already used it. And we can put together those kind of things. So thank you to those who were here. I know that um, Margaret just said she was um, came in a bit late. That's all right. This is being recorded and will be put onto the Business Station YouTube channel in time for you to be able to see it. You can also see it um, in the next few minutes at my <coughs> excuse me at my LinkedIn profile. Uh, so just search my name on LinkedIn and you'll be able to view that in the next few minutes. It'll show up there as um, being a video that I placed on as a live video on LinkedIn and and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those places. So thank you so much. It's been a bit of a whirlwind getting through there. What I really want to show you is it's possible to do these things and they're not really that intimidating to get into. But if you do have a problem with um, things like um, with um, Mid Journey, which is probably the best of the image generators, you might need a bit of a hand with that or at least read some of the tutorials so you can get it started properly. Thank you so much for joining me. I really th uh, hope you have a great week. And yeah, have fun with these AI tools. Don't be afraid of them. They're just there to help you to make better content. Thank you. Record.